Hi! In previous tutorials, we talked about geoprocessing operations such as the buffer, intersection, and then combining these using the weighted index model. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to combine all these using model builder so we can automate this process of all of these different point and click methodologies that we talked about before from our toolbox and then just run these all within one kind of program or diagram that we're going to make up ourselves. Now I'm looking at a project here called fooddesert.mxd. You can see the red dots represent bad food that we extracted from NAICS codes. Good food is green dots. I have rows here also, and then I have block groups. So when I look at my block groups in my attribute table for these, you can see there's about 193 block groups in Durham and Orange County for this study area that we're looking at. You can see the percent rental, percent college degrees, median household income, percentage of people below the poverty line, median age, and some of this other data that I extracted from the ACS, which is kind of above and beyond just your, the typical data that ESRI provides. Now today, what I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at buffers within one miles of a bad food, and I'm also going to look at low-income areas. So I'm going to try to find low-income areas that are within one mile of bad food. I'm going to count those or look at these number of areas and kind of look at ways that maybe these populations are targeted or whatnot, because these are some of the research that we found. So one of the things that we're going to do here is we need a buffer. And if you look in my ARC toolbox to the right, we can look at proximity and we can do this. Now remember how we did this before. We just stipulated my input feature class and we put in our linear units. But today it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to open up instead of my ARC toolbox, over here I'm going to open up my model builder. And I can drag my buffer over here. So I can drag my buffer onto this Kansas, uh, canvas and I can click on buffer because I want to combine these buffers with the block groups where the median household income is below $30,000. So when you see the buffer here, I double clicked on it and there's an output feature class. So I'm going to double click on this tool right here and it looks the same as what we had before. My input features are going to be my bad food. I'm going to stipulate one mile and I'm going to change my output feature class to what I'm working with. And this is my geoprocessing example. I'm going to call this bad food buffer. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice here that it's colored in. Now you can see the input parameter that it's taken, this bad food meter that I have here. Now the other thing that I want to do is I want to make a new feature layer from these block groups. And a lot of times we can do select by location or we can do select by attributes and we can select these, highlight these in blue and export these out. We can do this within the make feature layer functionality that we have in this model because that's kind of multifaceted step that we have to do. We have this somewhere in these data management tools and if you go through all of these you can see how many toolboxes and individual tools that we have. So another way to look up things is to use their search toolbar here. So I can click on search and I'm going to X out of this one for now. And over here in my search, I can type in what I want. And the tool that I'm looking for is called Make Feature Layer. Okay. This is a popular one that I've worked with in the past. So Make Feature Layer, that's actually in data management. And one thing that I can do, I can just drag this straight over into my canvas. So as part of my model, I can double click on this. And my input layer here is going to be my block groups for the study area in meters. And my output layer is going to be block groups, essay meter, layer one. And I have an expression here. And the expression that I'm going to look at is the median household income is less than or equal to $30,000. So the median household income is less than or equal to $30,000. And we've done this before. Okay. So I can click on verify. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you can start to see what I'm doing here. So my input is my block group layer here, or my block groups. Here it's my bad food. And what I want to do after that is I want to intersect the two. So I'll bring my Arc Toolbox back. I can click on Intersect. And what am I going to be intersecting? I'm just going to be intersecting this buffer and this block group. Okay, or this block group layer one, which is a result of the query that I made. So I'm going to double click here. And now, when I open these up here, down at the bottom, 
with this yellow diamond here, you can see that these are layers. But I'm going to be looking at the ones at the top, which are a result of my geoprocessing. So my block group layer one is going to be one of my input buffers for this intersection. And the other one is going to be my bad food buffer. In my output feature classes, I'm going to save this as my intersection. Okay. And click OK. Okay. And if you remember what an intersection does, it basically finds all the areas that are common between the input. There doesn't need to be two. We could have five, 10, 20 different input parameters, but it spatially explores areas that are common between my bad food buffer and the result of my make feature, which are all block groups, which are less than or equal to $30,000 median household income. Okay. And I can run this. Okay. I can validate this tool right here. So I can validate the entire model. I think it's going through and validating right now. And the one thing I do want to make sure is I want to make sure it runs correctly. Okay, so I know where my output features are. I can double click on this just to make sure I'm going to be looking for C temp geoprocessing example intersection. Okay. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to click run. And you can see these red dots show exactly where it is. The make feature layer, it did the buffer, it did the make feature very quickly, the buffer a little slower. And now it's running this intersect. So as you can imagine with this intersect, it takes a little while to do this. Okay, close. Let me just minimize this for now. Let's see the results. I'm going to click my black plus sign. And this is my intersection. And this is a result of my intersection. Okay, now what are one of the problems that you see here? I just want one feature here. When I open this up, I have more than 2,000 individual polygons. Now, this is kind of ugly here. Okay, I just want one polygon or one set of polygons or different nodes or whatever attached to this. So as you can imagine, this is this is pretty ugly here. Okay. Now if I go back to my model, if I go back to my model here, I can add a dissolve right here, but I'll probably just run it right now. Okay. So I'll minimize this and I'll look up my dissolve. I'm going to type in DIA. Okay, remember what a dissolve did? It, a dissolve just combined. And we can double click on this here. Dissolve just aggregates features based on specific attributes. So my input features is going to be my intersection. And it's just going to aggregate all of those. Okay? And we can pick out what it's going to be on. I believe it's going to be on the state FIPS because the state FIPS for all of these polygons, which is just combined from the intersection between the buffer and the make new feature layer is going to be the same. So if I really wanted to, I could do that. I'm going to click OK. And my output feature class is going to be dissolve. OK. And I'm going to click OK. This is going to run through and dissolve all these individual features and hopefully make something that's a little bit easier to deal with. Now what the result of this dissolve is just going to be these here. Okay? I literally have one feature here that represents the intersection of my buffers and my block groups, which have an income of less than a median household income of less than $30,000. Now some of the neat things that I do here and I could have added this dissolve right here if I wanted to. I can, could have added this right here and run this again, where the dissolve is just going to be the input feature is going to be based on my you know, intersect output. And we can create my model like this again. Okay. 
So I can run this again and get the exact same thing that you saw before. But this is an example of a model. Now, some of the neat things that I can do is, first of all, I can save these. Okay, and I can save these in my toolbox. Okay, you can see here, this is called test intersect. I'll call this test intersect and dissolve. So now I can access this whenever I want, edit this and run this. Okay, so now I can change my input parameters here. So instead of this buffer bad food, it could be something else. The other interesting things that I can do is I can export these to a graphic so that I can put these in PowerPoint presentations or Word documents so we can actually see a, a proverbial method to the madness that we have here. The other neat thing that I really like is when we create these models, we can export these to Python script. So I can export this to a Python. I'll call this intersect. And dissolve dot py. And I can export to, a, to this to a Python script. So now I can do file, open. I can go to my C temp. And I can open this up in my Python code here. Okay, intersect and dissolve. Okay. Me personally, I like working with PyScriptor, which is a uh, Python editor that works hand in hand with um, ArcGIS. To me, it works really well with ArcGIS. But you can see this is the Python code created from this graphic here. And we can make loops or add our own functionality into this because you, you notice as you get further and further into GIS, it might not be easy to kind of put all the functionality that you want to do within the confines of your canvas. So you might want to you know, loop through multiple databases, which gets a little bit difficult to do. But you can see here as a result that we have a really powerful way to combine our functionality into one so we don't have to click over and over and over. So we can decrease this redundancy and do things that would take a long time just putting them into one canvas so we can have one result like this. And then export these to a graphic and then export these to Python code. So this is geoprocessing with our model builder.